with volume, always a perk. <laughs> I want to tell you, thank you for coming to Friday Harbor Live, where our lovely, brilliant, talented Islanders share their skills and their stories with island kids of all ages. And um, with our guest, I was just talking about like, yes, we want to talk to little kids, but the beauty is we're all kids at heart. So it applies to all of us. Um, if you know someone who's really talented or has a great skill or stories to share, we love the stories too, or a place to tour that they are doing their um, quarantining at um, and their social distancing, go ahead and sign them up. Well, don't sign them up. Ask them to sign themselves up. We wouldn't want to do that to them. <laughs> Put anyone in a hot pocket there. But somebody sent one who is one of my favorite people to listen to live right now. And I have to tell you, it was such a treat because one of her first, she sat in there and she was sharing a story with her little readers and her fuzzy friend came in and um, we'll talk about that in just a second because we always know when it's live because things like this happen. But before we get going, I just want to say thank you to the San Juan Island Family Resource Center and the San Juan Island Community Foundation for sponsoring this program. Um, their resources and the work that they are doing for the island is absolutely amazing. And I am so grateful that we have so many caring community members literally working all day, every day to make things happen for our islanders. So thank you. And don't forget to wash your hands. Still, I know it seems like that's what they were saying. That was like last month's news, but it's still a thing. So still make sure that you wash your hands. 20 seconds, find your favorite song and, um, and get those 20 seconds in. But before I go any longer here, I want to bring in our special guest for today. Um, here she comes, and we're going to have her in three, two, one. Oh, there she is, Miss Melina. And I have her on mute. There she is. Hi. So good to see you. Good to see you too. And so we, I was. Started, I almost started telling the story of your lovely little furry friend. What's your kitty's name? So her name is Chubb. And she made a great um, debut. She did. She likes to um, photo bomb, video bomb, and what we call purr bomb. She likes to rub up next to you and just purr like crazy. Oh, well, it was really cute because you were reading a story to kids, and I don't remember what the story was, but... um. All of a sudden, her tail <laughs> this is going across the screen. It was the cutest thing. Yeah, I she just kind of started circling like a shark almost at first. And then it's like, what's she going to do? What's she going to do? And then she just purr bombed me on my cheek. <laughs> it was really sweet. It was really sweet. And it shows that we're all doing this really live. <laughs> we, yeah, we do things live. And I wouldn't be surprised if she makes an appearance today. I never know when she's going to come. But she's. <laughs> She seems to know when I'm taping. So just fair warning, she might show up. <laughs> Good. She's, she's got that radar on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and this month, I kind of made a shout out to the island and said, mm -hmm. this month is National Poetry Month. Yeah. And so you've put together something really cool. So did you want to tell everyone about that? Yeah. So I'm really excited because April is National Poetry Month. And usually um, libraries and schools and museums and different publishing houses are celebrating it and um, by giving workshops. And we at the San Juan Island Library, we usually go to the schools or go to the um, Camp Eagle Rock um, Star Camp. And we do poetry workshops this time of year. So it's really nice to be able to just come live to our San Juan Island audience and try to do it. Um, via Facebook. So this is a new experience, but I wanted to get it out there and just let everybody know that anybody can write poetry. And I'm going to hopefully show you three different types of poems today that you can write. And you could try to write, um, it's the last day of April, but just remember you can write poetry any, any day of the year. It doesn't have to be April. Perfect. Well, I'm going to jump out so you okay. can take over. Okay, and sorry. for people watching, there, the link to the packet is in the comments. 
So um, yes. it's, I know the whole thing is 21 pages. And so you don't have to have all of them for today. Yeah. But Miss yeah, Melina will I, lead you through. I created a packet that is free for anybody to download so you can get it through the Friday Harbor Live site or go to the library. And I'll talk about that at the end of the program. Okay, so I'll see you later. Okay, bye. Thanks, Bye. Now. Okay, everybody. Well, I am calling this Poetry with Miss Melina. A lot of the kids know me as Miss Melina from the San Juan Island Library. So I'm glad to be here with you today. Um, I am going to introduce you to three different types of poems that you can write. And I want to start off with two very easy ones. And then the third poem that we're going to write today is the haiku. Yes, the very famous haiku that people love to write and also love to read. So you are only going to need for today to get started. You'll just need a piece of paper and something to write with, like this pencil. Very, very economical, very easy. Most people have these just hanging around their house. If you do have a Chromebook or some other type of iPad, you can also go ahead and write on those. But I like to just use a pencil and a piece of paper. Okay, the first poem that we are going to learn how to write is called the alphabet poem. So I hope everyone can see this. It is the alphabet poem, and we are gonna use the alphabet to get started. So what I want you to do is find five letters in the alphabet, and I want them to be sequential. So that would be like A, B, C, D, E, or you could do L, M, N, O, P. But for today's um, exercise, I'm gonna stick with A, B, C, D, and E. And as you can see, I'm writing them vertically down the page. So that's what I want you to do is take those alphabet letters and just write them vertically down the page like this. And then we are going to take this first letter and we are going to write a word, maybe one word or two words to get started writing our poem. So you would start with the letter A to write a word. Then you're going to go to letter B, C, D, and E. So very, very simple, just choose one or two words. And the idea behind the alphabet poem is to just get you started, get you in the mode of using words in a very playful, kind of spontaneous, lyrical way. There's no like right or wrong way to do it, just getting you comfortable with using words. So I'm gonna give you an example of my A, B, C, D, E poem. I decided to do a silly one called Ants. It says, ants love buttered chocolate donuts with earthworms and earwigs. So I used A, I did ants, B, I did buttered, C, I did chocolate, D, I did donuts, and then for E, I did earthworms and earwigs. Okay, super simple. Anybody can do this at home. Now, if we want to make it a little bit more complicated, we're going to still take the letters of the alphabet, the A, B, C, D, E, and this time we are going to actually do phrases instead of words. So you're going to start with your letter and you're going to write a phrase. And then the phrases will become your poem. So that's what's so fun about the alphabet poems is the letter helps prompt you to write the phrase, but then by the end of it, you will have a complete poem written. So for my phrases, I decided to do something a little more serious. So I wrote this poem with using, starting with the letter A. Arms sprinkled with beach sand and hearts full of cravings for lingering summer days drenched in everlasting light. See, you can make a poem just like that. So now, doing the alphabet poems, we've done a very simple one. And then the second one we did was a much more complex alphabet poem. We already have written two poems, so I hope you're trying this at home. The second type of poem that we are going to do, and I'd like to introduce you to, is called the acrostic poem. So there it is, the acrostic poem. Acrostic poems.
poems are very interesting. So, as you can see here, the word acrostic is written horizontally across the page. But what I want you to do, I want you to think of a word or a subject, and we are going to write that vertically down the page like this. Very similar to how we did the alphabet poems, the A, B, C, D, and E. But this time, I want you to think of a word. I recommend thinking of a subject or something that you really, really love to do or something that you love. Um, for example, maybe you really love dogs. Dogs could be the word. Or maybe you like to play basketball. Basketball could then be your word. And the word that we write here is going to be the subject of our poem. So just like with the alphabet poem, we're going to start very simply the first time. And we're just going to write a few words for a very simple poem. So starting with the letter S for stars, I wrote, let me show you what I wrote. I just did one word. I wrote sensational, twinkling, amazing, radiant, supreme. So you see, you can just write a very simple, easy poem. Doesn't have to necessarily make sense, but I chose words that hopefully described the word and the subject here, stars. Now, the second part of the exercise is to take the same letters, but I'm going to do that phrases. I'm going to go ahead and write those phrases across. And for my phrases, I wrote, Stars in the night sky twinkle far in the distance against a black backdrop of radiance, wonder, and invisible summer heat. Again, you don't have to write a serious poem. You don't have to write a silly poem. You can write any type of poem that you want. But try with the acrostic poem to think of something that you love and are very passionate about because that will help you be able to describe it better. Um, another thing you could do, and I've seen a lot of kids do this and they love to do this, they will actually use their name or they might use a name of a friend or maybe they'll do one for mom or dad. So for example, if you had mom and your mom's name, you could then describe your mom or things about your mom that you love. So that's another example of how to do an acrostic poem. Well, that is an acrostic poem. I hope you are trying some of these at home. I know it can be a little intimidating to write poems. I never thought that I could write poems and that's why I like having these prompts. It just gets me started and then as I'm doing it, I build my confidence and then my skills get better and better. The third poem that I'm going to introduce you today is the haiku. The haiku is a traditional Japanese poem. And um, usually, like in the olden days, Japanese haikus would be about nature and they'd be very much inspired by things that they, um, people would see in nature. Or they could also be about very strong emotions like love or adoration. Today, we often will do what we call a modern haiku. So you can write a haiku that is not necessarily about nature or strong emotions. You could write something um, a little bit more contemporary, something that you see in your everyday world. You could even write it about um, COVID, for example, or you could write iPad or Facebook. You could write um, haikus about anything. I think um, Lisa Salisbury, who is one of the teacher librarians at the middle school and high school, she wrote an award-winning haiku about our ferry being, you know, being on the ferry and traveling on the ferry. So just an example of what you can do with a haiku. Haiku, here we go, there's the word haiku. Haikus have a very specific structure. So they have a structure of three lines and the first line has five syllables. The second line has seven syllables and then the third line has five syllables again. 
So you might know what a syllable is. If you are a kid out there who's not sure what a syllable is, I'm gonna tell you. A syllable is sort of a sound in the word. So for example, if I had the word rain, rain, that is one syllable. Now if I had the word rainbow, rainbow, that's two syllables. So that's how you have to think about syllables. You're sort of counting out the sound. So rain is one, rainbow is two. So when you're writing your poem or your haiku, you have to count out the syllables in the words to make sure that you have five syllables for that first line, and then seven, and then five again. And that is the structure of the haiku. So this is a little bit more complicated. It takes a little more thought, a little more skill. You might find yourself writing a poem and you've got your words down and then you count out the syllables and you realize, ooh, I don't have five, I have six syllables. How could I change that word in there so it makes it five syllables? So that's where the um, kind of the, the skill comes into play. And you wanna make sure that you are getting this structure just right on a haiku. Okay, so we got a five, seven, five. Always remember that for a haiku, five, seven, five. And we are going to write a haiku. So I'm gonna share with you my haiku that I wrote. Um, and all of these examples are in this packet that you can download for free on our website, or you can also download it for free um, from the Friday Harbor Live site. I decided I wanted to try to write a modern haiku, and I was inspired by all the dirty dishes in my sink. So I wrote this one called In the Sink. Dirty dish alone, drowning in dark, wet water, left until morning. So we could count out those syllables, right? So dirty dish alone. Well, dirty dish alone, five syllables drowning in dark, wet water. So that's seven syllables. And then the last line is left until morning. Five syllables again. So there you have it. That's how you write a haiku. So you might be at home wondering, well, I'd love to write a haiku, but what do I write about? What am I supposed to write about? Like, I just have this blank piece of paper. I have no ideas. How do I get ideas? One of the best way to get ideas is just to look outside and if something catches your eye, you could try to describe what that is and use words to sort of paint that picture for you. Or you can also look through magazines. If you have magazines at home, you can look for a picture in a magazine and have that picture help inspire you. So there's all kinds of ways that you can um, get the inspiration to write your poetry. So that is it. I just wanted to show you those three very um, easy prompts to get you started writing poetry. And if you want, um, I will say that the alphabet poem is probably the easiest um, to get started. The other great thing about the alphabet poem is that you can do the alphabet poem with smaller children like um, kindergarten, first and second graders who might not be ready to write on their own or don't feel as comfortable writing on their own. A grown up or an older child can help the younger child. Um, maybe the younger child could help provide the word that goes with the letter and then the older child or parent could fill it in with some phrases. So that's one way you can collaborate to create poems. So I highly recommend doing the alphabet, alphabet poem at home with younger kids. And then if you want to, you can kind of work up from there. And then the haiku, of course, is, is something anybody can do. Kids, um, adults, I know a lot of adults are writing haikus right now, so it's a lot of fun. If you'd like to share your poems, um, it's always fun to share poems. And I know in our workshops, one of the things the kids love to do is they love to get up and they actually do a reading. They recite their poem aloud to the rest of the um, participants in the workshop. I know that's not something we can do right now because we're sheltering at home, 
but there are some things you can do. Like for example, if you're sheltering at home with your family, you could have a poetry share or a poetry um, reading after dinner. You could all write a poem and then you could share it aloud with your family and your siblings. If you are um, alone and you're sheltering at home where you don't have siblings or family, you could try to do a poetry reading via Zoom. That could be one way to share your poems. Or you can also, I'm going to recommend, you can take your iPhone or your camera phone and you could snap a picture of your phone and then you could email it to me because I love to see what kids have written and also adults. I love to see what adults have written. And you can email it to me. I hope you can see this. I have my email address right here. It's M-L-A-G-I-O-S at S J L I B dot org. So feel free to snap a picture of your poem and then email it to me. I'd love to see what you've written. And again, if you want to download the free packet that's available, there are 10 poetry exercises in this packet. You can do so here on Friday Harbor Live. Val's going to post it for you to download. You can also go to our website at www.sjlib.org. So anybody out there, try a poem that you want to share. I don't know, Val, if you're out there, did you try one? I did. I wrote one. And so, so good. I have writing new haikus. Miss Molina teaches us how write poetry now. Oh, love it! Yay! <laughs> do you and like to write haikus, Val? Are you somebody who likes to write those? I am a big fan of haikus. And um, when I was a science teacher, when some of my students would finish a uh, test quickly, oh, did we just freeze there? Oh, we just froze a little bit. Um, but some of my students would uh, finish up quickly. And so I gave extra credit if oh. my students could write a haiku talking about the unit. And as a result, then what we would do is after we reviewed the test, we'd have a beat poem session at the end. So everybody could get up and we would all snap for each other. And oh, nice. <laughs> I love that. And do you find that kids like to share? Because I find that with the poetry workshops. Yeah, they must a definitely do. A little bit of encouragement, but once they get up there and they start reciting their poems, they, they all want to do it. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes they would ask me to read for them, which I was yeah. super okay with. But hey, we just had one come in. Walk outside, breathe deep, scents float on the soft breezes, sights, sounds, scents fresh. Oh. oh, that one's nice. Very snap, snap, snap. For we love one. it. <laughs> we love it. And so keep those coming. Those are so inspiring. Um, oh, just nice. absolutely love it. And Melina, I didn't want to let you get away without taking a second to talk about some of the amazing digital resources that the library has available right now for all Islanders. Yes. So um, if you go to our website at www.sjlib.org, you're going to see a, um, lots of links to different resources. One of the biggest, biggest links out there is our Overdrive Anytime Library. These are our digital ebooks and our digital audiobooks. So we really highly recommend that people go and use that free resource because that way you can continue to get reading materials um, while the library building is closed because we're not able to circulate materials right now. For kids and families, I will say there is so many fun resources, so please check out those. One for little kids is Tumble Books. This is an animated stories. Um, kids love them. It's such a great way to see picture books, and um, it's very high quality and well done. If you like to, um, we also have um, some cookie, like cooking from around the world, culinary stuff from around the world. We have our language learning databases. So maybe you're thinking about learning a new language. You can go and check out those as well. For kids, we have one called Muzzy. It's produced through the BBC. And um, it's great for kids who want to learn 
a foreign language or maybe um, you're an English language learner and it can help you with your English language learning. So there's all kinds of stuff. We have streaming video, we have Acorn TV, we have Flipster, which is um, an app that you can have on your iPad or your tablet or your phone, and you can have access to a variety of magazines. So there's just so much I could go on and on and on. Oh, but great. I highly recommend people go to our website and check those out. And then if you have any questions too, you can, email me. There's my email address. Again, I'm happy to give you any reader's advisory or any advice or help accessing those materials. And then one last thing, there are people who might not have a library card for the closure. And you can go now to our website and apply for what's called an e-card. And that e-card will give you access to those digital resources. And you don't have to come into our library building. You can do it all online. And we have staff working behind the scenes to make sure that you get those, get that card issued to you. So look for the e-card logo as well. So well, we really are, want to put that out there. <laughs> yeah, I was hoping you were going to mention that because I received that in an email from both my kids' schools. Um, and so it was so like way to go library on getting that out there right from the get-go. We are so lucky to have a a brilliantly staffed library oh, thank you. Thank <laughs> um, you. with everything you need whenever you go in there if they don't have it they will find it for you and um we're just very very blessed to have the people behind the helm there that we do and to have it supported in the way that we do so thank you for all that you're doing for our community right now well, thank you, Val, and thanks for what you're doing because I love Friday Harbor Live. I think it's a fantastic idea. I feel so grateful and honored to be a part of it, and I just um, want to thank you for including me. And I love just being able to connect with our community, and I miss everybody so much, and I can't wait to see them again in person. Yeah, we miss you too, and thank you for coming, and we'd love to have you back again. So. <laughs> Thank you. I have, I have more ideas, so I'll let you know. Excellent. Excellent. We'll take care. Okay. Bye. Love always to everybody. Bye. And thank you to everyone for coming today. We really loved having Miss Melina here. What a treat. She is just a gem. We're so lucky. And if you get your poetry out, make sure you leave it in the comments or send her a picture. Or if you have um, your mom or parent or guardian and or dad, um, take a, a photo and leave that in the comments. We'd love to see your poetry. We already have some haikus trickling in, which is a lot of fun. So I can't wait to see more. Um, be well. We'll see you next Monday. We have some exciting things afoot for you next week, including something with Lego. <laughs> It's true. So um, you're going to have to break out your box of Legos next week and get your pets ready. And well, there's all kinds of fun stuff. So thank you again to the Family Resource Center, to the San Juan Island Community Foundation for all your hard work, to the San Juan Island Library, all the staff. Thank you for all you're doing to make things happen for us. Have a great weekend. Get outside, wash your hands, and don't forget to wear your mask. Take care. Bye-bye.